good afternoon everyone it's Tom here again from Autodesk Australia and New Zealand uh, and thank you for joining me on uh, this eighth video of our plant project within the AEC collections um, last week we created uh, some documentation so we created uh, 2d orthos uh, and today what we're going to look at is creating some uh, fabrication drawings from our piping isometrics so traditionally inside a plant project the idea of uh, doing an isometric is, uh, you know, documentation to go out to a fabricator uh, and they would weld up uh, these spools, whether they weld from flange to flange or whether they weld uh, to the end of another fitting and then they'll do what's called uh, maybe a field weld or a field fit and weld. Um, sometimes the field fit welds or FFWs uh, may have what's called a little bit of extra green on the end of it. So that might be an extra 50, 100, 150 millimeters. Uh, so that, that, that way they can um, accurately cut it to suit out on site. Uh, and then that way they're obviously not going to be left with any issues when they place all of these piping spools. So uh, you can see here I've basically gone through and, and sort of completed as much as I can of this area. I've got some pipes that, that will need to head out to the pipe rack. I've got all my pumps modeled up. Uh, if I just switch to my realistic mode, so you can see here, we've got all of this pipe work done. We've got good access to these um, valves and any other fittings and all that kind of stuff that we need. So let's say for argument's sake, we want to start creating uh, some isometric drawings of any particular line so I can do uh, you know this this line here so it is if I hover my mouse it is uh, on layer number 1003 and because I'm doing uh, layer by pipeline number I can just start doing 1003 so in plan 3d I switch over to the ISOs tab at the top left there um, and just before I run the ISOs I'll just go through each of the buttons so quick ISO is, is just that just quickly Put a window around something and create an isometric for it. Um, it won't create uh, line numbers on it, it'll just do the ISO as per uh, sort of the window that you select. This could be handy if you're doing sort of system ISOs where you want to see all of the ISO sort of runs on one sheet, um, but I highly doubt that uh, you're going to get every uh, ISO on that one sheet anyway, so you're probably going to break it down anyway. Production ISO is just that, so we create a production ISO based on a line number, um, and then we've got different styles. So I'm not going to go through all of the styles here, but out of the box we have check, final, and spool and stress ISOs. So check A2 or check A3 is obviously just an A2 and A3 sheet. It might have a, a check, uh, check print sort of table down the left-hand side for the checker to mark off things they have to check, uh, and the final one may have that table removed, and it might have the proper client's logo on it. Uh, spool and stress ISOs would be different styles depending on what you want to see in there as well. Under the events tab, you can export certain tables um, at the same time. You can ignore breakpoints, reverse, uh, and sudden endpoints, change the direction uh, of the isometric. So by default, it'll be uh, a think upper left. Um, our proper ones might be upper right, but we'll have a look at that later. Create the split points can be done automatically. So you've got this slider bar here that you can go less or more of. Um, and also split ISO and property changes. Now, by default in industry, um, you might find that most of the time a line number change indicates when there's a spec change. So 99% of the time you might find that a line number change is what you need. So by default, it's always going to be a line number. But if you want to change it by a service, so if you're changing from a uh, water to another liquid then uh, again you could do that but most of the time they would be a spec change or a line number change anyway. Um, if you want to rotate or offset the um, isometrics so if you want them to have real world coordinates you can add x y and z values to the uh, model uh, coordinates. Mm. Um, if there's enough if you want to make comments uh, down below in this video, I can I can go through this in a little bit more detail at another time. Uh, we can create a DWIF, we can override it if it's existing, and I can give it even just a revision number. But for this exercise, I'm not going to bother. So I'm just going to pick line number 1001 and do it as a final A2, and then go create. So what that's going to do is go off and it'll uh, create the ISO locally on my machine. So the, there's no function to 
uh, send it off to another machine or the cloud or anything. And then down the bottom right hand side, you can see this little icon here. It says that it's being processed in the background. So all we need to do is just sit here and, and wait for it. And then what's going to happen is we're going to get a dialog box saying that it's finished. So you can see the balloon has come up and I can click inside that to get that dialog box. Now by default, it looks like it's it's decided to split it into two sheets for me. So it uh, looks like we're, we're doing a field weld here. Uh, and we've also got, uh, looks like coming off the tank nozzle one. Uh, and we do have um, a little bit of a skew triangle there as well. So if I go back to my isometrics dialog box, oops. so final A2, 1001, and then you can see it comes back out and then it ties into, into another line there. So it's decided on its own to split where it needs, where it thinks it needs it. Now, if we go into the project setup, Again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but uh, under this ISO style setup, you can tell it to place field worlds at maximum lengths as well. Um, and then this spool sizing uh, has been set up to be 2 by 6 by 2 So it looks like a, somewhere somewhere in there, it's decided to, to break it up into a certain size. Uh, again, we don't have to uh, keep that. We can change it as well. So it looks like it's put in a couple field worlds there for me. We also have our bill of materials, so we have 17.7 meters of uh, seamless plane end pipe uh, in um, 80 mil size. We've obviously got all of our other fittings, fasteners, cut piece lengths, uh, and even weldless as well. Now there is a thing here called the LDT, so the line designation table. We can populate all of this information um, that could be in, in an Excel spreadsheet. Plus, any of this information can be generated off um, off the pipeline data as well. So let's have a look at one where I can even break it up myself. So let's say this one over here. So just this line back here with all of the, the valves on it. So it is, if I look at the properties of it. So it is line number 1010. Okay. so. Go back into my production ISO, look for 1010, run it as a final A2 and go create. Now what I'm going to do is just sort of get an idea on what it's going to look like uh, as the software sort of wants to run it. Uh, and then just for argument's sake, what I want to do is go into my layers, I'm going to turn off all the other layers. Just hide them. because I just want to see what line number 1010 is going to look like. So, is that ISO run? We can go in here and check. So final, go 1010, it's still running. But what we can do is, in the meantime, just see what it's going to look like. So I might just go through and run that again. Just let that run in the background. So, if if I find that the the software doesn't break it down good enough for me, I can switch to 2D mode. Now, this is again my own personal preference because it means that I can see sort of what is going on in here. So, um, what I can do is manually put in a, a break point. So, I can come in here and go. Uh, node so I can put a breakpoint on that line there so we you can see that we've got our our 1010 there um, and then you have to sort of think about it from the fabricators point of view as well so um, so you can see that that ISO has run but because I'm if, if I'm thinking in the fabricators point of view, these different spools could go to different people um, in the workshop. So you might find that the person who's, who's been put in charge of doing the spool is doing the spool from this nozzle around. He's doing it to the first flange. 
and then he's going to do it to this flange here as well. So this is how I want my spools to start breaking up. So I'm going to put a break point there. So everything is a node to node connection. So don't do center, don't do end, don't do anything else. Do uh, node to node. So now that I've broken it all up, I'm going to rerun it again. Well, let's have a look before I do that. So this is run. So you can see there's the tail end of that pipe run. And there's the, the, the beginning part of it. So as it's come out of the out of that reboiler, so you can see automatically it's broken it up into the spool that I want. So it's come up out of the reboiler down to the first flange and to the first. So what that what that means is in in the workshop, this can be built as one spool. Again, every workshop is going to be different. Every project is going to be different. You might want to put a, a weld here at this uh, number five at this point because in that way it's going to be a flat spool. So it could be packed easier as well or shipped easier. Um, but again, this one you have to think about it's going to be packed in two directions. So again, it may or may not work. It's all up to um, who's on the project, the, the, the main checker, the piper, the engineer, whoever, someone will, will sort of give some advice on, on how they want these schools to be created. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove these out of the project uh, and then what I'm going to do is rerun these again and then we're going to see how they come out with my breakpoints in them. So while that's running, I'll go through some of the other options in here. A reference dimension means that we can place a reference dimension back to uh, a building or a grid line or a structural member as well so that way that we um, they can locate this pipe spool in the field any messages that need to be on it so it might be uh, again something for the fabricator or the installer out on site to take note of Ma uh, floor symbol markers any flower arrow symbols insulation symbols a location point so again referring back to uh, again some known point nominating the start point so we should really probably put that back over here where it's going to come out of the reboiler uh, and a manual break point. So if I go back now so we can see that uh, I've got my four spools there. So we've got one here. So this is coming from the other line number. So in theory, I could probably put a field fit weld in there. Um, and then we look at the other line. So this is that first line. Again, it's come in there as that one spool. There's another spool, so even though it looks small, it just means that that could be given to a different uh, fabricator in the workshop, uh, and then that way they don't have to mess about with trying to find out where that goes. And again, this one here, this is a spool between two flanges, which are obviously coming off the valves. So then that way, it's just a little bit neater for the fabricator to weld up. Now you see here, this is obviously all out of order, so this is where we come up with the um, start point function to, uh, to change that. Also, lastly, before I, I finish up, is this PCF export. So this creates a um, PCF. So I'm going to stick it on my desktop, uh, and then basically we'll open that up and you can have a look at it. So a PCF is essentially just like a text file, and it contains the information of that uh, pipe. And you can see here that we have uh, just some different attribute data that we can export but basically this is what it's going to be it's a weld uh, end push it, and it's got coordinates uh, different pieces of software will read this uh, and then either create maybe other isometrics or you could import this to other um, stress analysis packages and it would recreate the pipe in uh, from that as well the other thing that plant 3d will do is PCF 2 pipe so if you have a PCF from another package or another plant project, we can convert that from uh, basically that text file that we had uh, into pipe again. And again, that, that can be something that I can cover in another video and another date. So in short, this is just, a, again, a quick, easy way to create isometrics if you need to for the, fab the fabricators. You get all the weld tables, the bomb tables, the cut piece lists, 
uh, and any other information that you want to put on there. And this is basically the reason why you would use Plant 3D for a piping project. If you don't need to create fabrication isometrics, you obviously still have the option to create piping uh, out of even something like Revit um, or even one of the MEP software that, that we have. Um, but again, ultimately, you just have to decide if you need fabrication ISOs. If that's a hard rule that you have on your project, then Plant 3D is the only package that will do that. So this brings us to the end of this video. Um, thanks for watching and in about two weeks, we're gonna come back and start creating some uh, reports with the data manager from inside Plant 3D. So if you're, you're looking to create some data reports off data manager, check back in a fortnight and uh, we'll get a video going there. Thanks for, thanks for watching, see ya.